Lord Leggett will summarise the court's judgment. This is the first case in which an appeal court has had to interpret legislation aimed at deterring an employer who has agreed with a trade union arrangements for collective bargaining from making offers to workers which undermine those arrangements. The legislation was enacted by Parliament in 2004 to bring the law in the UK into line with Article 11 of the European Convention on Human Rights, which protects the rights of individuals to join trade unions for the protection of their interests. The legislation penalises offers made by employers to workers who are trade union members, which, if accepted, would have the result that one or more terms of their employment will or will no longer be determined by collective bargaining. This is referred to in the legislation as the prohibited result. An offer made for the sole or main purpose of achieving the prohibited result is unlawful. A worker to whom such an offer is made can complain to an employment tribunal. If the complaint is upheld, the worker is entitled to be paid a fixed sum award. At the relevant time, the fixed amount was £3,800. Mr Dunkley and the 56 other claimants in this case are all members of the trade union Unite and are employed as shop floor or manual workers by the respondent company, Costal UK Limited. Following a ballot of workers, Costal and Unite signed a collective bargaining agreement, which was stated, like most such agreements, not to be legally binding. In October 2015, they began formal annual pay negotiations. After two preliminary meetings with representatives of Unite, Costal made a pay offer. Union members were balloted and rejected the offer. Costal then made the same offer to its employees directly, bypassing Unite and offering the incentive of a Christmas bonus to workers who accepted the direct offer. A month later, Costal made another similar offer to those employees who had not yet accepted the first offer. Costal also said that failing to agree, quote, may lead to the company serving notice on your contract of employment. Eventually, after over 97% of employees had accepted one or other of the direct offers, Costal and Unite reached a collective agreement for 2015 on similar terms to the direct offers, but without the Christmas bonus. The claimants complained to an employment tribunal that the direct offers made to them by Costal were unlawful. The tribunal upheld the complaints and made the statutory award of £3,800 to each claimant for each offer made to them. Costal appealed to the Employment Appeal Tribunal, which, by a majority, dismissed the appeal. Costal then appealed to the Court of Appeal, which allowed its appeal and set aside the awards. The claimants now appeal to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court unanimously allows the claimants' appeal and restores the awards made by the Employment Tribunal. The Court gives two judgments. I give the majority judgment with which Lord Briggs and Lord Kitchen agree. Lady Arden and Lord Burroughs give a joint judgment which reaches the same result but differs in some of its reasoning. In their arguments on the appeal, both parties agreed that the legislation covers offers which, if accepted, would require workers who are trade union members to agree to forego or relinquish collective bargaining rights, either indefinitely or for a finite period of time. Costal argued that this is the only type of offer which is prohibited. The claimants argued for a wider interpretation of the legislation. On their case, it's enough that if the offer is accepted, one or more terms of the worker's employment would be agreed directly between the worker and the employer, at least for the time being, and until the term is subsequently varied or replaced by one negotiated through the collective bargaining with the union. This interpretation was accepted by the majority of the Employment Appeal Tribunal. If correct, it would mean that any offer made directly to workers who are trade union members to make any change to a term of their employment which has not already been collectively agreed, falls within the legislation. The majority of the Supreme Court rejects both parties' interpretations of the legislation. 
In our view, the parties were wrong to focus entirely on the content of the employer's offer. What the legislation prohibits is not an offer with a particular content, but an offer which, if accepted by all the workers to whom it is made, would have a particular result referred to as the prohibited result. The legislation is concerned with the potential practical consequences of an employer's conduct. For the offer to be unlawful, there must be at least a real possibility that, had the offer not been made and accepted, the relevant terms of employment would have been determined by a new collective agreement reached with the union. In practice, this requires the employer to follow and exhaust the agreed collective bargaining procedure before making any offer directly to its workers in relation to a matter within the scope of the collective bargaining agreement. If the collective bargaining process has been followed and exhausted, but the employer and the union have been unable to reach an agreement, an offer made directly to workers will not have the prohibited result. That is because it cannot be said that when the offer is made, there is a real possibility that the new term would have been determined by collective agreement if the offer had not been made and accepted. What an employer cannot do with impunity is what Costal did here. Make a direct offer to its workers, including union members, while the collective bargaining process is still continuing. Here, the facts found by the Employment Tribunal show that the collective bargaining process was still continuing when Costal made offers directly to the claimants. In those circumstances, the Employment Tribunal was entitled to find that the offers were unlawful <coughs> and to make the statutory awards. In their separate judgment, Lady Arden and Lord Burroughs agree that the appeal should be allowed, but disagree with the majority's interpretation of the legislation. They prefer an analysis closer to the claimant's case. They do not think that an employer can avoid liability just because the collective bargaining process has been exhausted. On their view, where a direct offer to workers who are trade union members would, if accepted, change one or more terms of their employment, it is for the employer to convince the tribunal that the sole or main purpose in making the offer was a genuine business purpose and was not to achieve the prohibited result. Whilst the reasoning in the two judgments differs in these respects, the court is unanimous that the claimant's appeal should be allowed. <coughs>